Hello and welcome to another episode. It's great to have you here, and whether you're new or returning, I hope you enjoyed the video. This time on Restoration DIY, I'll be making a hollow form from a piece of you casting four colour epoxy resin. So without further ado, let's get into it. The piece of you needed trimming to fit into the casting bucket, and it seemed to be a good opportunity to try my new Japanese saw. This one is a Kabata. It's designed to be a rip saw, and the quality of the cut is excellent. Next, I used a brass wire brush to clean the surface of the wood. It looked fairly clean, but once I got started, I was surprised how much dirt and flaky bark came off it, so it was well worth doing. timber nice and clean, I hoovered up the mess and waxed the casting bucket. Then I glued on some scraps of wood to the blank to make a level surface for the weights to sit on. It was whilst doing this I thought I'd try something a bit different. In my recent castings I've had a lot of problems with voids forming in the resin as it cures, so this time, before the main resin pour, I decided to add a primer coat of epoxy to the bare wood. I hoped this would seal the surface, keeping the air trapped inside preventing the voids from forming. I mixed a small amount of resin and not wanting to ruin a paintbrush, I poured it on the blank and spread it around with nitrile glove covered fingers. This did the trick. It was easy to work into the surface, making sure I covered the whole thing. the fully primed blank placed in the casting bucket, I put it to one side and left it to begin to cure. I wanted the resin primer to be tacky, so the resin in the main pour would stick to it. It's 30 minutes later and time for the main casting. The chosen colours were turquoise, lime, carmine rose and golden. I added the mica powder to four full batches of my favourite brand of resin, then each one was thoroughly mixed then left to pre-cure before adding them to the casting bucket. Another 30 minutes or so has passed and the resin is beginning to gel. So with no time to waste, I added a bit from each batch until it was all in the bucket. Then it was placed in the pressure pot. After screwing the lid down nice and tight, I added 50 to 55 PSI and left it overnight to cure. It's the next day and with the casting out of the pressure pot I could see some cracks in the resin but no voids. So the priming was successful. The cracks were formed when the resin cooled down and shrunk around the timber. I did take it out of the casting bucket to see how bad they were but I didn't get that on camera. I decided to fix them before I did any turning. I put the blank back in the bucket and mixed a three quarter batch of green resin and poured it onto the casting. Now on its own it might have run into some of the cracks but it was going to need some help. Luckily, I have a vacuum pot, which is perfect for this job. With the pump turned on, the pressure began to go down and the bubbles of air began rising. It was working. Now, not wanting to mansplain, or at least not too much, I'll describe what I think is happening. As the air is being drawn out of the blank, resin is going down to replace it. I could see the level dropping, but that's not the full story. I left the vacuum at around 1 bar 15 psi or 29 inches for about 5 minutes. Then I gradually opened the valve to slowly equalise the pressure. But because the pressure under the resin is still lower, the higher pressure above forces even more resin down into the cracks. It's hard to see on camera, but I could see it happening. After the first run, I removed the lid, checked the resin still covered the blank, and then I did another run, and I was surprised to see even more bubbles, so I kept going. I repeated the process a total of three times, and then I used a catering blowtorch to get rid of the frothy bubbles on top, and it went back into the pressure pot to cure overnight. I 
another day has passed and with the blank removed from the casting bucket, I could see the repair had been a success. All of the cracks were completely full, so I removed the scrap bits from the top and on closer inspection, you can see the repair lines in the resin. I drilled a couple of holes at either end and fixed the blank to the lathe. The blank was a bit unbalanced, so I could only turn the lathe up to around 700 RPM, but with that done, I could begin removing material. As usual, the first thing to do was get the blank balanced. For this, I started with a full-size carbide cutter, but I switched to the 3 8 bowl gouge to see if it would work. It was okay, but it soon went blunt, so I went back to the carbide. For a start, the balance of the blank seemed to get worse. The more I removed, the more violent the lathe shook. I stopped to check the chuck was still tight and all was well, so I continued, and eventually the vibrations calmed down. The flaky resin is from the batch I mixed to repair the cracks. It hadn't bonded to the surface, so it would have to be removed. The carbide soon got rid of it, then I moved on to levelling the base and cutting the mortise. To level the base, I used the bowl gouge to shear scrape through the waste resin to expose the U timber underneath. It took a few goes and a bit of tidying up from the skew, but with that done, I could move on to cutting the mortise. the mortise, I used the quarter inch parting tool to define the outer edge, cutting into a depth of around quarter of an inch, six millimetres. Cleaned out most of the inner material, leaving a tiny bit for the tailstock support. I cut the dovetail with a dovetail cutter, then I cleaned up the rest, which loosened the tailstock, but after I retightened it, I sanded from 80 to 800 grit. After sanding, I applied a finish, topped off with Hampshire Sheen Gloss Finishing Wax. Mortise finished, I turned the blank around and began shaping the outer surface. Unlike most of my other projects, which I start with an open mind as to how the finished piece should look, right from the beginning I knew how I wanted this one to be. Using a freshly sharpened bowl gouge, I set to removing material to begin forming a narrow base, but there was a problem. The blank was running true, but the vibration was back. I persevered for a bit, but I had to do something about it. I figured the best place to start would be to remove the excess material from the top. I repositioned the tool post to get better access and using the bowl gouge, I removed the protruding piece of U, then continued to level the top to get a consistent flat surface. And this did the trick. The vibration stopped. So I continued to roughly shape the upper section. Sticking with the bowl gouge, I began forming a sweeping curve from the top down into the side. This began the process of getting the piece to its final shape. Starting with this rough profile, I could then move down to the lower section to shape that bit. I 
made the first cut into the lower section, I didn't move the camera, thinking I would only make one or two cuts before going back to continue shaping the top. But I had a slight mishap. While shear scraping around the base, the resin shattered, and as you can see, it made quite a mess. I took a couple of minutes to think about it, and then I decided to cut through the damage to see what it would look like. Using the parting tool, I cut down to clean material, and to be honest, it ended up more or less where I wanted it. With the outer diameter of the base roughly defined, I could begin to shape the lower section. Using the bowl gouge, I gradually removed the waste material, shear scraping a curve up and round into the midsection. I thought the piece would have a slightly inset foot, so I reduced the diameter of the base to form the shadow line and then continued refining the outer surface profile. The lower section was beginning to shape up nicely. The U was suffering from a bit of tear out, but frequent use of the large negative rate scraper kept this in check. Moving back to the upper section, I still had a fair bit to do. The middle had a large flat spot, which I wanted to get rid of. The shape I had in my head was a series of curves from the inset rim, flowing round and down into the base. Gouge was doing most of the work, removing the bulk of the material. I was pleasantly surprised to see how good a finish it was leaving, though I had to keep switching to the skew chisel to remove the tool marks. the top section for a while I went back to shaping the lower part. This needed more work and this is where I made a slight design change. Still using the gouge I removed material down to the level of the inset foot, essentially getting rid of it to create a flush surface. Doing this meant I could then form a deeper more pronounced curve up into the mid part. The shape of the piece was now mostly done, so I used a large negative rate scraper to blend and fair the curves, refining the surface ready for sanding. I had to reposition the tool post to get to the top, which needed a bit more work from the gouge, the negative rate scraper and the skew. With the outside done, I could start hollowing out, but first I had to define the edge of the opening. I'd initially wanted this to be quite narrow, but there were some rough bits that needed to be turned out, which forced the opening to be a bit bigger than I'd hoped. Using the parting tool, I cut a recess, then before moving on, I sanded with 80 grit, just to check for any low spots or tool marks. There was some tear out, but I would deal with that a bit later. 
So I removed the tailstock, cut away the raised bit in the middle and drilled a hole down the center with a 40 mm Forstner bit. This is a new chuck and it still had a bit of oil on it, so it was slipping in the tailstock, which is why I'm holding it. But it very quickly drilled down to its full depth which will save me a lot of time removing the waste material with wood turning tools. To get better access, I rotated the headstock 45 degrees, repositioned the tool post and set to hollowing out with a mid-sized carbide fitted with a standard cutter. The carbide cutter was doing a good job. I was mainly cutting into wood. As my confidence in it grew, I took heavier cuts, but I pushed just a bit too much. I got a huge catch, which ripped the workpiece clean out of the chuck, sending it spinning into the back of my workshop. Surprisingly, there wasn't any bad damage. The mortise was a bit gnarly, but still usable, and the edge of the base would need a bit of TLC. So I refixed it to the lathe and my good luck continued. The blank was running true without the slightest wobble. I put the mid-sized carbide to one side and broke out the side cutting scraper. This had just been sharpened on my new ultra fine diamond cutting wheel. It cut into the U peeling away fine wisps of material without the hint of a catch. sure if you can tell but the scraper was leaving an almost perfectly smooth surface i'm not sure if it was the new diamond wheel or just the u being good to cut maybe a combination of both but i hope it continues on my future project using the scraper i was able to cut away material in both directions as you can see here in actual speed, I slowly worked the cutting head from the base up towards the top, then back down again, trying to maintain even pressure on the surface and keep the tool level. scraper was I wanted to try the full-size carbide. This was more controllable, especially towards the top, but there was still a way to go so it wasn't long before I went back to the scraper. I continued hogging out the waste material, switching between the side cutting scraper and the full-size carbide, working my way to a finished wall thickness of around 8mm. I was fairly close at this point, but there isn't much to see, so I'll skip ahead to the final shaping. For the last few passes, I used the full-size carbide to smooth the inner surface and remove any ridges. Then a final tidy up around the top and the inside was done. I moved the headstock to its normal position, used the skew to blend the top surface into the side and sanded with 80 grit to get a consistent surface. The edge of the base needed some work to remove the dings from when it hit the floor. For this, I used the bowl gouge and the large negative rake scraper. I sanded one more time with 80 grit, then I did some repairs with black star bond 
to fill some scrapes again from when it exited the lathe. When these had cured, I power sanded them flat, then continued sanding, both inside and out, all the way up to 3000 grit. Sanding done, I cleaned down with denatured alcohol. Then I applied two liberal coats of sanding sealer, each one denibbed with a non abrasive scotch pad. Next, Yorkshire Grit, just a single coat, thoroughly cleaned away until no more residue is picking up on the paper towel. Next is the resin polishing. First to go is Polar Shine 10, a single application, thoroughly cleaned away, ready for the next stage. Polar Shine 5, another single application, thoroughly polished off to leave a deep shine. And to finish, Hampshire Sheen Gloss Finishing Wax. Two coats, buffed with more paper towel to seal and protect the surface. it another project finished and this was a good one it turned out more or less how i wanted it to look i really like it and i hope you like it too the multicolor flaming green red blue and gold resin framed by the dark edges of the u looks incredible and even the repair lines add something to the making of it with a piece like this it is of course unique there won't be another quite like it but i can't wait to find another piece of you to work with anyway with all that said i'd like to thank you all for watching please subscribe, a thumbs up will be much appreciated, and comments are always welcome. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.